The degrees of Eastern Orthodox monasticism are the stages an Eastern Orthodox monk or nun passes through in their religious vocation. In the Eastern Orthodox Church, the process of becoming a monk or nun is intentionally slow, as the monastic vows taken are considered to entail a lifelong commitment to God, and are not to be entered into lightly. After completing the novitiate, there are three degrees of or steps in conferring the monastic habit. Orthodox monasticism Unlike in Western Christianity, where individual religious orders and societies arose, each with its own profession rites, in the Eastern Orthodox Church, there is only one type of monasticism. The profession of monastics is known as tonsure referring to the ritual cutting of the monastic's hair which takes place during the service, and was, at one time, considered to be a sacred mystery sacrament. The rite of tonsure is printed in the Eucologian Church Slavonic, Trebnik, the same book as the other sacred mysteries and services performed according to need, e.g., funerals, blessings, exorcisms, etc. The monastic habit is the same throughout the Eastern Church with certain slight regional variations, and it is the same for both monks and nuns. Each successive grade is given a portion of the habit, the full habit being worn only by those in the highest grade, known for that reason as the great schema or great habit. One is free to enter any monastery of one's choice, but after being accepted by the abbot or abbess and making vows, one may not move from place to place without the blessing of one's ecclesiastical superior. One becomes a monk or nun by being tonsured, a rite which only a priest can perform. This is typically done by the abbot. The priest tonsuring a monk or nun must himself be tonsured into the same or greater degree of monasticism that he is tonsuring into. In other words, only a hieromonk who has been tonsured into the great schema may himself tonsure a schema monk. A bishop, however, may tonsure into any rank, regardless of his own. Also, on rare occasion, a bishop will allow a priest to tonsure a monk or nun into any rank. Eastern Orthodox monks are addressed as father, as are priests and deacons in the Orthodox Church, but when conversing among themselves, monks in some places may address one another as brother. Novices are most often referred to as brother. Although some places, e.g., on Mount Athos, novices are addressed as father. Among the Greeks, old monks are often called garonda, or elder, out of respect for their dedication. In the Slavic tradition, the title of elder Church Slavonic, Starek Starets, is normally reserved for those who are of an advanced spiritual life, and who serve as guides for others. Nuns who have been tonsured to the Stavrofor or higher are addressed as mother. Novice and Rasifor nuns are addressed as sister. Nuns live identical ascetic lives to their male counterparts and are therefore also called monachi, the feminine plural of monacos, and their community is likewise called a monastery. Monks who have been ordained to the priesthood are called hieromonks, priest monks. Monks who have been ordained to the diaconate are called hierodeacons, deacon monks. A schema monk who is a priest is called a hieroshema monk. Most monks are not ordained, a community will normally only present as many candidates for ordination to the bishop as the liturgical needs of the community require. Bishops are required by the sacred canons of the Orthodox Church to be chosen from among the monastic clergy. Today, the most important centers of Christian Orthodox monasticism are St. Catherine's Monastery in the Sinai Peninsula Egypt, Metaora at Thessaly in Greece, Mount Athos in Greek Macedonia, Mar Saba in the Bethlehem Governorate of the West Bank, and the Monastery of St. John the Theologian on the island of Patmos in Greece. Degrees <laughs> <laughs> Novice Novice Greek, Dokomos Church Slavonic, Poslusnik Poslusnik, lit. One under obedience. Those wishing to join a monastery begin their lives as novices. After coming to the monastery and living as a guest for not less than three days, the abbot or abbess may bless the candidate to become a novice. 
There is no formal ceremony for the clothing of a novice, he or she simply receives permission to wear the clothing of a novice. In the Eastern monastic tradition, novices may or may not dress in the black inner cassock Greek, Antirian, Antirian Esaracen, Esaracen Church Slavonic, Padriasnik and wear the soft monastic hat Greek, Skoufos, Church Slavonic, Skuffia, depending on the tradition of the local community, and in accordance with the abbot's directives. In some communities, the novice also wears the leather belt. Monks are given a prayer rope and instructed in the use of the Jesus prayer. If a novice chooses to leave during the period of the novitiate, no penalty is incurred. He may also be asked to leave at any time if his behavior does not conform to the monastic life, or if the superior discerns that he is not called to monasticism. When the abbot or abbess deems the novice ready, he is asked if he wishes to join the monastery. Some, out of humility, will choose to remain novices all their lives. Every stage of the monastic life must be entered into voluntarily. Rasafor Greek, Rasophoros, Rasophoros, Church Slavonic, Rasofa, Ryasofa, lit. Robe bearer. If the novice continues on to become a monk, he is clothed in the first degree of monasticism at a service at which he receives the tonsure. Although there are no formal vows made at this point, the candidate is normally required to affirm his commitment to persevere in the monastic life. The abbot will then perform the tonsure, cutting a small amount of hair from four spots on the head, forming a cross. He is then given the outer cassock Greek, Razon Rasen, Exorasen, or Mandorasen, Church Slavonic, Rasa Riasa, an outer robe with wide sleeves, from which the name of Rasafor is derived. He is also given a kalimivkion, a cylindrical brimless hat, which is covered with a veil called an epanokalimivkion. These are separate items in the Greek tradition. In the Russian tradition, the two are stitched together and collectively called a klobuk. If he has not previously received it, a leather belt is fastened around his waist. His habit is usually black, signifying that he is now dead to the world, and he receives a new name. Although the Rasafor does not make formal vows, he is still morally obligated to continue in the monastic estate for the rest of his life. Some will remain Rasafors permanently without going on to the higher degrees. Stavrafor <inaudible> 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 Stavrofor Greek, Storophoros, Stavrofouros, Church Slavonic, Krestinosek Krestinoses, lit. Cross -bearer". The next level for Eastern monastics takes place some years after the first tonsure when the abbot feels the monk has reached an appropriate level of discipline, dedication, and humility. This degree is also known as the Little Schema, and is thought of as a betrothal to the Great Schema. At this stage, the monk makes formal vows of stability of place, chastity, obedience and poverty. Then he is tonsured and clothed in the habit, which in addition to that worn by the Rasafor, includes the Paramandias Greek, Paramandias Church Slavonic, Paramon Paramon, a piece of square cloth worn on the back, embroidered with the instruments of the Passion, and connected by ties to a wooden cross worn over the heart. The Paramandias represents the yoke of Christ. Because of this addition he is now called Stavrafor, or cross-bearer. He is also given a wooden hand cross or profession cross, which he should keep in his icon corner, and a beeswax candle, symbolic of monastic vigilance the sacrificing of himself for God. He will be buried holding the cross, and the candle will be burned at his funeral. In the Slavic practice, the Stavrofor also wears the monastic mantle, which symbolizes 40 days of the Lord's fasting on the Mountain of Temptation. The rasin worn by the Stavrofor is more ample than that worn by the Rasafor. After the ceremony, the newly tonsured Stavrofor will remain in vigil in the church for five days, refraining from all work, except spiritual reading. Currently, this vigil is often reduced to three days. The abbot increases the Stavrofor monk's prayer rule, allows a more strict personal ascetic practice, and gives the monk more responsibility. <laughs> Great schema 
Great Schema Greek, megaloschemos, megaloschemos, Church Slavonic, Schema Schema — monks whose abbots feel they have reached a high level of spiritual excellence reach the final stage, called the Great Schema. The tonsure of a schemamonk or schemanon follows the same format as the stavrophore, and he makes the same vows and is tonsured in the same manner. But in addition to all the garments worn by the stavrophore, he is given the analavos Church Slavonic, analav, which is the article of monastic vesture emblematic of the great schema. For this reason, the analavos itself is sometimes called the great schema. It drapes over the shoulders and hangs down in front and in back, with the front portion somewhat longer, and is embroidered with the instruments of the Passion and the Trisogen. The Greek form does not have a hood, the Slavic form has a hood and lappets on the shoulders, so that the garment forms a large cross covering the monk's shoulders, chest, and back. Another piece added is the polystavrian many crosses", which consists of a cord with a number of small crosses plaited into it. The polystavrian forms a yoke around the monk and serves to hold the analavos in place, and reminds the monastic that he is bound to Christ and that his arms are no longer fit for worldly activities, but that he must labor only for the kingdom of heaven. Among the Greeks, the mantle is added at this stage. The paramandius of the megaloschemos is larger than that of the stavrophore, and if he wears the clobuck, it is of a distinctive thimble shape, called a cochlean, the veil of which is usually embroidered with crosses. The schema monk also shall remain some days in vigil in the church. On the eighth day after tonsure, there is a special service for the removal of the cochlean. In some monastic traditions, the great schema is never given or is only given to monks and nuns on their deathbed, while in others, e.g., the Cenobitic monasteries on Mount Athos, it is common to tonsure a monastic into the great schema only three years after commencing the monastic life. In Russian and some other traditions, when a bearer of some monastic title acquires the great schema, his title incorporates the word schema. For example, a hieromonk of great schema is called hieroshimamonk, archimandrite becomes schema archimandrite, hegumen, schema hegumen, etc. In the Russian Orthodox tradition, in such cases the part schema is commonly truncated to she. S C H E and correspondingly the titles are spelt as Shimona Schimonic, Eroshimona Eroshimonic, Shihamandrit Shirchamandrit, and Shigumen Shigumen. Topic: Coptic Orthodox monastic degrees. In the Coptic Church there are only two degrees of professed monks, corresponding to the Rasaphore combined with the Stavrophore and the Great Schema nothing equivalent to separate Stavrophore status in the Coptic tradition. The two rites of Rasaphore and Stavrophore are served one immediately following the other, as a single service, very seldom nowadays to be separated by several years. When the two rites are separated, the portions of the habit that were given in the previous rite are not given a second time in the latter rite. As for the great schema, which is made of a leather cord twisted in design and has five to seven small crosses along its length and worn crosswise around the neck, flowing down crosswise front and back, it is usually granted to bishops either upon their episcopal consecration or shortly afterwards and it is usually granted when a monk has reached a high degree of asceticism or has been living as a hermit and also to the monks, hieromonks and abbots who have been in the monastic life for over thirty years and have been living in an exemplary monastic life topic see also akamitai christian monasticism monastery of studios topic external links Initiation of a monk from the Mount Athos website History of monasticism in Russia Vows of Great Schema a portion of the tonsure service Tonsure of a Schemanon Novo Tikvin Monastery, Ekaterinburg, Russia Great Angelic Schema Russian Orthodox Moscow Patriarchate. Paraman Russian Orthodox Scuffia for Schema Monk photo. 
embroidered Greek great schema photo.